What number? So look at page 224, number 33. Number 33. So it says that which of the following formulas represents an alcohol? D. D, D. correct. Right, that's correct. So D. So which one is A? If you have C to H5, let's use that for review. C to oh. H. Which group is this? Which function, uh, which function group does this belong to? Uh, ethers? Yeah, ether. ether. It's an, this is an ether. Is it like the R, O, R? The R, O, R. Okay, so this is your, like your R group, R group held on by oxygen. So that's an ether, okay. Now, what about C3H5, sorry, H8? Which one would be this one? Am I saying that right? <laughs> Say that again. Alkane? Al alkane, yes, alkane, so an alkane, okay. Because this is C, if you look at the formula, CNH is 2N plus 2, right? 2 times 3 is 6 plus 2. So that gives you 8. So it's an alkane. So you have single bond in here. Correct. And then the other one, CH3COOH. Carboxylic acid? Yeah, that's a carboxylic acid, the cool group. Carboxylic acid. Okay. Good. All right, good. So you see, the, that's how they ask some of the questions. So next time can be any of these other, other groups. So once you know them, you can apply them. All right, great. All right, page 225, page 225. Number 40. A substance with a pH of eight is a, a strong acid, B, weak acid, C, strong base, and then D, weak acid, weak base. D. 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 All right, so D says um, weak base, correct, because we think a pH scale is closer to seven, right? So it's a weak base, that's correct. Okay, what are 42? Which of these substances forms an alkaline solution in water? So you want an alkaline solution in water. A. Alkaline. A. It's uh, magnesium hydroxide. Correct. So magnesium hydroxide, H2. Because it's gonna give off OH in solution, right? OH, correct. Magnesium plus OH minus in solution. That's correct. All right, good, good. So far, so good. Okay, look up page 226. Page 226, number 47. Number 47. It says hydrogen can be prepared in the laboratory by combining zinc with hydrogen chloride. So you have zinc plus hydrogen chloride. Say so in the resulting reaction, the metallic zinc is A. So A is changed to another element. B reacts with water in the acid. C replaces the combined hydrogen in the acid, and then D serves as a catalyst. D. You said D. Okay, it's any other person, somebody try something else? I would say later, uh, letter C replaces the combined hydrogen in acid. Yeah, it's letter C, it's C, right? So what happens in this, if you add um, like a zinc to hydrogen chloride, the zinc displaces the, 
hydrogen. So we have zinc chloride. Usually you have two of these here, plus hydrogen. It gives off hydrogen gas. Okay, hydrogen gas is given off. Okay. So you say hydrogen can be prepared. And that means given off hydrogen. So what happened? The zinc displaces the hydrogen from the ACL. Okay. If you balance this, that means you have to have like two here. You know, this is how it looks like. So it replaces the hydrogen. And that's it. Okay. Okay, another one. Number 50. Which of these substances has the highest boiling point? Highest boiling point. So make a good guess. That's water. Water, correct. Water. Why? It, it, do the other ones have lower boiling points? Um. Now the water here forms like what it calls, it has like forms strong hydrogen bonds, right? You remember it forms hydrogen bonds. So because it forms hydrogen bonds, it has a greater, it has a higher boiling point than the other ones. The other ones are organic compounds, they don't, they, which don't form strong hydrogen bonds here. Okay, so water has strong hydrogen bonds. Remember last time we looked at hydrogen bonding. So that's why it has the highest among this group. Okay, number page two to seven. Page two to seven, and then number fifty-three. Which of these biological processes includes the other three? And then you have Krebs cycle. You have cell respiration, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, anaerobic splitting of glucose. A. Yeah, A. A, remember I made mention of that. So A. So cell respiration includes the Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, and then the anaerobic splitting of glucose, okay? So that's the glycolysis, anaerobic respiration, the same as the glycolysis. So it's A, correct. What about 54? 54, we said that already. A five-year-old and her father each lifted identical chairs from the floor to a tabletop. Which person did the most work? Which person did the most work? And then A, the father, B, the five-year-old. C, uh, they both did the same amount of work. Then D, not enough information is given. C. <laughs> yeah, C, same amount of work, All right? Same amount. Okay. And then 55, an excess of which of these ions tends to make a solution acidic? You have A, chloride, B, hydrosyl, C, hydronium, and then D, sodium. C. Um, B, right? No, no, you said what? C or D, which one do you say? What number you said, 55? 55, yeah. Yeah, C. C, yeah, hydronium, hydronium ion, C. So hydronium makes a solution um, acidic, correct. Yeah. All right, so these are some questions on acid and bases. Um, there's one question I'm gonna ask you before I continue, and this is a question. Okay, if I throw a paper or an object, any object, this way, right? Let's call this X, the path X from the top of a, like a top of a tower or something. I throw the ball down this way, right? Now, if I stand on top of this, the same tower, but then I throw it from this level, straight down, path Y. Which one is going to hit down first? Path X or Y? Along which one? Same y. time, X first, Y first, or same time? When would they all hit the ground? The same time? Same time. The answer is the same. Same time. 
Okay. Same time to hit the ground. All right. Now, what's happening here is that the, the, the balls are falling, these uh, objects, the object is falling down and uh, what we call the free fall. It's a free falling object. Free fall. Yeah. It only falls under the acceleration due to gravity. That's all. Nothing else, nothing more. So it, they all hit the ground at the same time. Yeah. Now, the only thing is that the air has to be like it's still air. <laughs> you know, you can only produce this more uh, better in the lab. It has to be still air, still air. In other words, the wind is not blowing. You know, then if the wind is blowing, then it's going to, the thing is going to roll. But the objects, if there's no wind blowing, still air, then they will fall down at the same time. Because they are falling under the acceleration due to gravity, which you call free fall. Free falling objects. Professor? Yes. This is because of the gravity, right? Yes, they're falling under acceleration due to gravity. That's the only thing affecting the objects falling. So it doesn't depend on their weight or the size and so on. If the wind is blowing, then it will be difficult to get this going because the wind will be blowing, depending on the size of the objects, it will, it will be rolling and, you know, yeah. they're going different ways, you know, but if the air is like still air, then you have this okay, right there. So that's another question. It's a diagram somewhere, I think the book. Okay, all right, so we're seeing, all right, page 229, page 229, number five. More energy is used in pushing a box up along an inclined plane to a height of four meters than in lifting the box straight up to the same height. This is because A, more force is needed in pushing the box than in lifting it. Lifting it. B, work is done against gravity in pushing the box along the plane. Um, C, the box moves a greater distance when pushed along the plane than when lifted. And D, it takes more time to push the box along the plane than to lift it. So which one do you think is correct? B, B. B yeah, more force is... No, sorry, work is done against friction in pushing the box along the plane. Correct. So number five, it's B. So it's so number five. So work is done against, against friction in pushing the box along the plane, Professor, the number B? Yeah, B, yeah. Because there's friction, right? So friction acts in the opposite direction. So you have to overcome that to be able to push your box up. So you are doing work against the friction in pushing it up. Okay, so page 230. Page 230, number eight. So it's a diagram that you want to identify here. Number eight. Yes, number eight. So what, what kind of circuit is drawn here like that? It's parallel. Yeah, it's parallel. So that's a parallel circuit. Parallel circuit, correct. But there's an alternate path. If you block one path, you still have an alternate path. Correct. All right, so page, what about number nine? Number nine, the device shown in the following circuits consists of copper wire wrapped around iron rod and connected to a switch and battery. So when the switch is closed, the device will serve as? B. B, an electromagnet? Yeah, electromagnet, electromagnet correct, electromagnet. It will serve as an electromagnet. Okay, good. Uh, number 10, now you have a graph, right? So 
The following graph shows a motion over 10 seconds. So during which time interval did the car travel the greatest distance? You want to, so what's the greatest four distance? Four to six seconds. Four to six seconds, correct. How did you get that? How do you get four to six seconds? Remember I said is the area under the, the distance is the area under the graph. You've got velocity and time. So the area under, oh no, this is two here. And it's like four here. And then here you have six and then eight is somewhere here and 10, right? So the area under the graph between the time interval is the distance. So zero to two, if you look zero to two, the, I mean, this is the area here, zero to two is this area here. The, it, you can estimate using the boxes, right? The, the boxes can help you find the area. So here you have like half a, a box, it's a triangle, half a box here from zero to two. Okay, and that's the area there. And then you have two to four, two to four is a box and a triangle. Then four to six, you have two boxes four to six, two boxes here. So, and then as eight to 10, eight to 10, you have like a triangle, so half of a box. So the greater distance you said is this here. Two boxes is greater than all the other ones. Okay, so you can use that approach to estimate the area. So you are correct. Okay, now number 17 on page 232. Number 17, page 232, the application question. Vinegar is a common antidote for the ingestion of lye. What is the chemical process underlining this treatment? A, digestion, B, alkalinization, C, oxidation, and D, neutralization. D. D, yeah, this neutralization. Vinegar is an acid, it's, it's not an acetic acid. And then uh, lye is a base. So acid plus base, you have neutralization. So you're, you're neutralizing it. So this is like a clinical application of neutralization. And then maybe last one here, page 234. Page 234. Number 21, I guess discuss that already. If you look at the diagram. So objects X and Y are identical. In a laboratory, object X is dropped at the same moment that of um, same moment that object Y is thrown horizontally, right? And then it says the path followed by X and Y are shown, like the one the diagram I drew. Which statement is true? Say so X will hit the ground first, Y will hit the ground first, X and Y will hit the ground simultaneously. Y has a greater vertical displacement than X, you know. So here we have the answer is C, right? Guys, they'll, they'll hit the ground at the same time, simultaneously. All right, D, sorry, 22. 22, blue litmus paper with 10 red when placed in a solution having which are the following pH values. Blue litmus becoming red. So are we talking about acid or base? It's D, the lead. Yeah, so are we talking about acid or base here? The blue becoming red. It's acid. That's acid, yeah, so acid. So we need to look for the acid, so which is three, 14, 12, and seven, so it's three, correct. Okay. All right, so one more, um, number 24. The compound H2SO4 is an example of A, a salt, B, base, C, acid, and D, um, halogen. And acid. C. Yeah, it's an acid, H2SO4, it's an acid, correct. Okay. And then if you look at page, 236, you see one of the movement, the tropism movements over there. Tropism movements. Which number is it, Professor? Uh, number 30, page 238. You see the diagram I drew, the, the plant and then the light. You have the plant and the light growing towards sunlight like this. Okay. So which of the following processes best explains this phenomenon? A, stigmatropism, B, geotropism, C, hydrotropism, and D, phototropism. D, 
Yes, yeah, so that's photo tropism. Sometimes they use plus and minus. It is a positive geotropism. It means it's going towards like negative means away, right? We say positive phototropism towards negative away, and so on. If you see the plus and minus in some questions, okay, right, good. I mean there are more that we can keep going, but uh, I would like us to um, stop here. Let's go and continue with our math for today. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so try and then look for similar problems like what we've done today, and then you should be able to answer them. If you look at the last column of the schedule, you can be able to do all the questions there. Okay. Right. Okay. So let's catch up on some of our math where we stopped last time. So let's go back to page. We are on page 11, page 106. 106. So let's look at number 11 to 17. 11 to 17. So take about two to three minutes to look at it yourself and then we'll discuss. Page 106. 11 to 17. So let's look at the first one. So number 11, um, what do you do for 11? Someone can talk us through. Yes, uh, my number D, Professor, is two. 
two. All right. So you, you do a square root of 64 yeah. first. So that's yeah. eight. eight. And then divide by that and have two. That's correct. Yeah. So D is correct. Okay. okay. What about number 12? Number 12, C. C. Okay. Yeah, C. So what, what approach did you use for number 12? I use 1.18 times 250. Okay, so let me write it down whilst you talk. So first you find in 18% uh, of 250. So we said you change decimal, right? So 0 0.18, that's 18%, one, two, right? Times 250. And what do you get? I got 25. Say that again. 45. 45, okay. So you have 45. And then step two, you add, right, 250. So that's 45. And then you get your 295. Correct. Excellent. So two steps here. For those who have forgotten, find 18% uh, of the original cost. And then you add it on. If it's discount, then that one you subtract, right? But this time, mark, mark up. So you add on. Correct. Is there any other way you could have done this too? Some people like to do it some other way. Number 13? Number 12. There's Number another way. Okay, some people will add the 18 to the 100. So you have um, 118. So in that, if I, you can use a percent proportion. Remember, percent proportion, approach percent proportion. If you remember part over whole, part over whole, or, the, or, or what you call the base, is equal to the percent over 100. If you remember this percent proportion, you can also use it. Okay. A lot of the percent problems, you can use the percent proportion to do the part and whole. Okay. The part is always associated with the word is. And then the whole is associated with the word of. All right, like John is a student of. So the of part is a base. Is is the portion. Right. Right. So in this case here, we can say that the percent, since we went 18 above 100, increase. So 18 above 100, that's 118, would be the new percentage out of 100, eight, 118 out of 100, that's a percentage. So this will equal to, you know, your whole, the whole is original. So 250, yeah. Then you are looking for what will correspond to the 118. So 100 goes to the 250, 250. that's 100% original. And then 118, what would that be? So if you do the percent proportion and do the cross product, 100 times that, that's 100. And 118 times 250, if I divide by 100, divide by 100. So this cross out, the x will be equal to, the answer will come out as 295. That's another approach. Okay. But I know most people would like this one. So you can, you can stick to the first one if you're okay with that. Professor? Yes. Uh, you said 118 over 100 or 18 over 100? It's 118. Because it's increased, eighteen percent increase. Okay. So your new cost is eighteen above the original hundred. Hundred is like the original. Your 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 your, your original is hundred. Yeah. Now you've gone eighteen above it, eighteen percent increase. So you're going above the base, which is a oh. hundred. So one one eight. You know. Oh, yeah. If it's discount, then you subtract and go down to the percentage. If you want to use this approach. Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay, all right. Okay. All right, so what are number 13? What do you come up with number 13? Um, C. C, yeah, C. I can do it, Professor, can you do it, please? Okay, now for this question, if you are confused with this question, yeah. then you want to approach it like this. You can rewrite this as 0 0.022 divided by a certain number is equal to 0 0.55. This is how it looks like. Okay. Right, you're divided by a certain number. 
So here, that tells you that if you do the cross product, if we want to put this over one, that's fine. So cross product, this times that, 0 0.55 x is equal to 0 0.022. And then you have to divide by 0 0.55, divide by 0 0.55. So your x will be equal to, so if you move that decimal point, if you, have, you can use a calculator to do this. If you don't have a calculator, they have to make sure the denominator is whole number, one, one, two, two places to the right. Do the same thing here, one, two, so it becomes 2.2. 2. And then you use long division to divide this. Okay, so if you divide long division, zero point, then again, zero, and then four, can add zero here, they have two, two, zero. Okay. And then get the answer. Say it again. We can use calculators, right? Oh yeah, yeah, you're allowed to use it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so this is how you, you, so if you're confused, use algebra, right? Rewrite this in algebra form and then you can approach from there. Okay, good. All right, now what are the parameter question? Um, B. You had B, okay. All right, so let's see how you did it. So since we did a rectangle, we know that we have length and width, right? Mm -hmm. So the perimeter of a rectangle is two times the length plus two times the width, the perimeter of a rectangle. You've been given the perimeter, that's 36. So 36 here is equal to two times the length. We don't know the length. So let's give two L plus the width is six. So you have 36 is equal to 2L plus 12. Subtract 12 from both sides. So you have 24 is equal to 2L divided by two. So you have your L should be equal to 12. Okay, correct. So it's eight centimeters. Okay. Correct. In other words, you multiply six by two. If one just want to do arithmetic, and then this is six, six. This is missing, that is missing. So six plus six is 12, subtract 12 out of 36, whatever you get, which is 24 divided by two to get your L. That's what this means. Perimeter is not around. Okay, good. Now, what are 15? See? Right. Okay, so let's look at that question. Some people get it wrong. So it said difference. When you say the word difference, you just translate the way it appears. So difference between the boiling point. So it means the boiling point minus the freezing point, right? Of mercury is 396. So this is equal to 396. This is the translation. Boiling point minus freezing point equal to that. Now they gave you the boiling point, 357. So it's 357 minus F is equal to 396. So if you subtract, so negative F will be equal to 396 minus 357. And then that gives us a 39, negative F. So one F, so it means that we have to, divide by negative one or multiply by negative one. So F will be equal to negative 39, correct. So C, so be careful with this question. Don't think it's 39. Okay. You have to translate the way it appears. You know, this minus that equal to that. Okay, great. All right, 16, which is not a set of prime numbers. So 16, it's not a set of prime numbers. D. D. That's letter C. To what? Prime? So it's at 3 and 23. But it says it's not. Uh, it says here it's not a set of prime. 27 is not a prime number. Yeah, 27 is not a prime number. Because so 3 times 9 is 27. Yeah, so it means that is C. Yeah, C. Yeah, so nine and 27, they are not 
prime numbers because of the nine is a prime, but this is not a prime. Okay, so that's no, it's, it says 19 and 27. Oh, sorry, yeah, 19 and 27. Yeah, so this is not okay. So, number 17, you want to simplify three over four over six. I got B. You got B. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see. I got D. You got D. All right. <laughs> I got D. All right, so you have B and, and D, so let's do it together. What number is it? 17. 17. So what you have to do is to translate, you can translate this into like um, division, simple, like regular division. So it's like saying three over four divided by six. That's what that means. What is division symbol? We can put this, put this over one. Now, if you're working in fractions, if you're dividing, you have to keep the first fraction, chain to the division to multiplication, so times reciprocal of the second fraction, one over six. So this is how it should be. Right? So, you can now reduce this three into itself is one, three into six is two. So you have one over eight. So the answer is D. Yeah, so you should get D. So anything I'm confused, just rewrite the whole thing in, in arithmetic format. Okay, all right, so let's look at number 18. Number 18. So again, that's a ratio and proportion type of problem. So it's assumed that the ratio of deaths resulting from heart disease to death is um, to, to, to death from cancer is five to five to two. So five, the ratio is five to two. So five from heart disease, so heart disease to um, two from cancer, you can set up the same ratio on the other side. Again, heart and cancer. As I said, proportion can help you do so many things on this test. So now I say for every 100 deaths resulting from cancer, how many deaths do we expect from heart disease? So we know that for cancer, 100 here, we don't know how many. So that's the proportion that you want to solve. 250. Yes, 250. So the cross product, 2x is equal to 5 times 100. And then divide by 2, divide by 2. And then we have our 250. Correct. What about number 19? 3.5% of 1,400. It's B. B. OK. All right, so what, what did you do for this question? Um. The off means multiplication, right? Of its multiplication. So you can do 3.5 over 100, that's percentage, or some people can change this to decimal, of two times 1400. You can do that. And then you get the answer. Yeah, I'll put a 0 0.035 times 1400 is yeah. 49. So you get 49. So you can cross this out if you're not too sure, you can put this over one, then this will cross it out. Yeah, 3.5 times 14, you get 49. Yeah. Or, as we said, you can change this to decimal, which is 0 0.02 places, 3.5, and then times 1,400. You get the same answer, 49. Okay. okay, what are number 20? Number 
number 20 is D. You got D. Number 20? Yes, yeah, which one? Um, number 20 is A. A, okay. All right, so tell us what you did. I put um 12 times 0 0.15. Okay, so 0 0.15. Point one five. That's correct. And then I do sixty. Sixty. Then I put um twelve after there. Um, so what is what? What so what, what do you get again? I do eight. Twelve, 12 um, times zero point one five. Huh? The twelve times zero point one five. It says what? One point eight. Yeah, one point eight. Yeah, 1.8. And then you would minus that from the 104.3. Yeah, so 104.3 minus 1.8. Okay. And then you have your 102. 102.5. Okay. All right, yeah, so anytime you hear per hour, 0 0.15 per hour over 12 hours. So over the 12 hours, you have to multiply by 0 0.15. And then since it dropped, you subtract from the temperature, correct. All right, 21. So you see the expression is 3a cubed b squared c plus 12a for b c cubed. And say find the greatest common factor. So the greater common factor, the number that can go into each of the terms. Greatest common factor. B. 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 Okay, let's see. Yes, you are correct. 21. 21 is C. So you are correct. Um, that is um so three and twelve. You're gonna take the numbers first between three and twelve. So the GCF between three and 12 is three, smallest greatest common factor. Then a cubed and a to the power four, you always use the one the smallest exponent, because this can go into itself and it can go into that, right? A cubed. So a cubed is part of the GCF. And then b squared and then b, smallest exponent, one. So that is b. And then c, one and three. So between these two, c, one to the power one. So this will be your GCF, smallest exponents, part of the GCF, All right? So that is why it's, um, it's B, sorry, it's C. So the answer is C. Okay, good. And then 22. A six ounce bottle of medicine is on hand. Each person X receives five ounces. Which of these formulas shows the amount of medicine M left in the bottle? So you have M is equal to 64 over five X, B, M equal to 32 over X, C, M equal to five X minus 64, and D, M equal to 64 minus five X. D, D, correct, correct. So each person receives five ounces and there are X number of people. So it means that the total given out to five times the number of people X, right? And you're starting with 64 ounces, so 64. So if you take this out of 64, it gives you whatever is left. So that's your M, correct? M equal to 64 minus that, correct? Great. All right, for number 23, try that one and let's see. I want to see how you do that one the quick approach that you're going to use. Twenty-three. Say that again. It's B. B. OK, I'll B. OK. All right. So what did you do here? I put um, 2, then 1 over 2 times one one over two equal five 
over um, two times three over two it was 15 over four mm -hmm. and then i got 48 one over two times one one over two it was 97 um over two times three over two mm -hmm. it was two, 91 over four okay all right so i mean that's that's okay all right but um we can also do this quickly if you look at this is it a level measure um two and a half by one and a half i, I cut into i cut out we cut from a rule measuring for 48 three fourths by one and a half inches what's the maximum number of labels that can be made right so if you look at this here it means you have to know the area of the big one like big rule right divided by the area of the small rule right that's what i have here and the area is length times the width that's this okay if you write it this way you don't have to multiply this out. You can see that there's something that you can cross out quickly. They have common uh, factors that you can cross out, right? So I have one and a half here. I can take out the one half, cross this out, and this one half, cross this out. You want to save time. So whatever you have here is just dividing 48 3 4. You are dividing that by two and a half, these two fractions. Then, you, then, then your life becomes easy. This is what you're dividing, okay? So if you're dividing this, remember you have to find the, um, you have to change to a mixed number, right? First, change to multiplication, a mixed number, and then we're gonna change this. So mixed number. So we have 48 times four, and then plus three, which will give us a one, 95 divided by four. Okay, so this times that plus three is that over the denominator four divided by this times that as plus one, that's five over two. Okay. So since we're dividing two fractions, we have to keep the first one times reciprocal of the second one. And then we can work this out. So we need that two here is one, two here is two, and we can cross this out. Five here is one, five here will be um, three. That's three, um, three, 39, right? So I have 39 over two left. If I divide this, I'll get one point, and so 18, uh, no, hold on, nine, we'll get 19. 19. And a half, right? 90.5. But then you're dealing with labels. So you cannot have half of that. So 19 is the number of. So that's correct. 19. But you can make your life easy if you cross out um, the common factor that you have. This and that common factor. So cross that out. Then you only divide the two numbers. You want to save time. Okay. All right. Good. What are 24? 24. 24, I deal with a circle. Three fourth of, a circle indicates that three fourth of a hospital budget is spent on staff salaries. How many degrees of a circle represents staff salaries? So we took a circle, we have to remember the total degrees, right? Total. 16. Okay, so 360 degrees total. Number of degrees. Okay. So we're forming three feet of that. So three over five times 360. That's what we want to find, right? Okay. And then if we do this five years, one, five into 360. That is seven seventy-two. And if we multiply two one six, so D is correct. Degrees, perfect. Okay, All right, good. So look at twenty-five. Twenty-five. Twenty-five at D. Is it a point four percent? 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%. 0.4%.
Okay, let's see. I have two feet of 1%. Two feet of 1%. Okay, so two feet off means multiplication. So two over five off, so times 1%. So that's one out of 100. So it should look like this. Okay. Now, the quick way to do this for me will be to change this to decimal. If I change this to decimal quickly, anything divided by 100 is easy. You know, there's a percentage. So I can just do that. So if I change this to percent uh, to, to decimal, if you use a calculator, if you want to do five over two, so uh, two over five, so you divide this into this zero, zero, that's four, so it's 0 0.4. So I have 0 0.4 times one over 100, so it's the same as 0 0.4 over 100. Okay, so I have 0.4 over 100. Decimal, sorry, a percentage. Anything over 100 is a percent, so this is, same as 0 0.4 percent out of 100. So D is correct. Yeah, so percent. Other than that, you have to go the long route. You got to multiply out, now change back to, and that's my percent, you know, that's long way. Long way, okay. So number 26. 26 should be easy to do. The dose is given, the child dose is given. It's equal to, they get a formula Y over Y plus 12 times the adult dose. Okay. So they gave you the child, uh, the dose for the child. So they gave you the adult dose, 30 milligrams. Now, the child is eight years old. Why is the age? You want to find the child dose. Okay. So here you plug in. You're going to plug in. So you have eight over eight plus 12 times adult dose, and adult dose is 30. Okay. And if you follow up of operation, then you have to work out the group here first. So it's eight over eight plus 12, that is 20, and then times 30. Okay, I can cross out zeros. I can put this over one, cross zeros out. And then two, one, two, here is four. So we have four times three. So that'll be 12 milligrams, 12 milligrams. So that's how we do this one. Okay. Good. Oh, what about 27? In which of these problems is a value of three over two over three change by the calculation? The first one is two over three plus zero. You are 27? Yeah, 27. It's D. D, yeah. If you divide those two numbers, it's gonna change um, the number. Okay, the first one, any number plus zero is the same number. If you divide by one, the same number. If you multiply by three over three, the same as one, any number times one is the same number. But if you divide two over three by two over three, you have to flip the second one and multiply. So D is gonna change, correct. Then what are 28? 28. 28, you have a right angle triangle, right? Right angle triangle. So you have a right angle triangle. If I draw that out. The short leg, these are the legs. These are called the short leg. Here is the leg and the leg. So this is 12 and then nine. The here is called the hypotenuse. Uh, 
hypotenuse. So it's B, it's 15. Yeah, 15. Okay, right. So what, what theorem did you use here? There's a theorem that you have to use. If this is A, B, and C in the right angle, remember the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. It says that if I have a right angle triangle, you have A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, right? Always. So here you've given 12, the short letters A. So we're gonna have 12 squared plus nine squared is equal to C squared. Okay. So you have 144 plus 81 is equal to C squared. This would be five. And then that's two, two, five equal to C squared. So to find C, we need to take the square root, something squared gives us that. So we need to take the square root of this side, take the square root of the right, left side as well. The square root of C squared just be C is equal to, and I have 15. Correct. That's correct. Good job. Okay. All right. So I think um, let's let's round up on um, twenty nine, and then we'll stop for today. If you have, if you can give us as of like two minutes, then we can have a we can finish up this um, next three thirty to forty next week. Okay. So for twenty nine. 29 involves a little bit more work. All right, so it says, suppose that three, three, four quarts of blood have been donated for blood transfusion and two, three, four pints have been used. How many pints are left? How many pints are left? All right. It's so, three. oh, you have the answer already. Okay, all right, that's okay. All right. Okay, so let's do that together. You know, just for the sake of those who are forgotten this. So we deal with pint and quarts, right? Pint and quarts. You have to have the same units. So we know that one, one quart is equal to two pints. It's very important conversion that you have to have in mind. Okay, one to two. Okay. So if you have three, three fourth quarts of blood, we have to change to pints since the other units are in pints. So it means that I have to multiply three, three fourths times two to get the amount of blood in, um, in, in quarts, right? So I have to change this in proper fraction. Four times three is 12 plus three, that's 15 over four times two. So that will give us, uh, I can reduce the lowest terms so two years one, two years two. So at 15 over two, All right? 15 over two, uh, what do you call it? Pints of blood, that's what I have, right? So this will be the same as saying I have three, two here is seven, seven and a half. So seven and a half pint of blood, okay? Now you have used two, three, fourth pints of blood. So it means that I have to subtract. So I have seven, one half minus two, three fourths. That's the subtraction I have to do, okay? If I'm subtracting two fractions, I have to make sure I have the same LCD. So this is four, this is times two times two. So it should be two minus two, three over four. Okay, so it is the same as, if I subtract this, it's going to be negative, but I can borrow from the seven. So if I borrow one from the seven, it's in terms of the denominator. So it's four parts out of four. So I can add a four to this. So I have six whole numbers, six out of four minus two, three fourths. Okay. Now I can subtract this whole numbers are four, six minus three, will be three over four. So that's the answer 
C, as you said, correct. So four, three, four pints of blood. Okay, good. All right. All right, so that's good. Um, so we'll finish this up um, 30 to 40, and then we'll start the second uh, part of the math. Okay, next week. Okay. All right, so keep practicing ahead. You know, keep practicing ahead. We'll catch up along the line. Um, any questions before you leave for the day? Okay, I have a question. Yes, will you discuss the English part also, the prefix, suffix, those things, or will have?